Hello, my name is Kerry Arthur, and today we are going to have a little look at the Orc range on Forge World. Cheeky little Forge World range review. I'm still feeling super under the weather. In fact, I feel worse today than I have for like a week, which is very annoying. It's fine. It's just the flu. It'll shift. It's not the actual thing. It's not the pandemic thing. I had the test and everything. It's not that. But it, a flu is still a flu, and it still sucks. And uh, it's getting a bit old now. But you know what helps? Mental state. Looking at delicious miniatures. Don't know why I said delicious. Let's start off with the gargantuan Squigoth, which uh, I forgot to check the price of before we started, and I believe is super expensive. £278, yes. Well, in fairness, this is a chunky boy. This is a chunky lad. I mean, you can see... Well, you can see the scale of a Space Marine helmet up there. Quite, quite the large one, this. I really like this. I have to admit, the Squigoths are not necessarily something I would go for personally, but I can at the very least appreciate the uh, the design, the scale, the detail. It's a really, really good model. It's it's peak Orc. I would suggest that the Squigoth... It, it's quite a silly thing, quite a silly concept, but it's so well executed, and it's so Orky, like... The, I would suggest Squigoth's kind of iconic for Orcs, even if you don't see them all that often due to them being, you know, somewhat specialist in terms of being a Forge World thing. But they do look really good. The armour plating and stuff that kind of holds the, uh, like, the the manned section, Orced section, uh, on the on top of the, uh, the massive lizard. I really like the kind of segmented feel of it. The fact it covers the whole tail is a really nice touch. And you've got those like those rings of spikes at the end of the tail as well. It's such a cool model. It really is. I mean, there you go. There's a very good uh, very good size comparison of a gargantuan squigoth next to a battle wagon. Absolutely massive. Massive model. But it is absolutely class. And I've just realised, I don't think I saw that battle wagon specifically on the site as I was going through, so I wonder if that's no longer available. We will have to investigate as we go along. Let's move on to the, just your normal Squigoth. Not your Gargantuan, just your normal. So you've got your Gargantuan, which is that size, pretty massive, and then you've got the normal Squigoth, which is considerably smaller. I have to admit, I have to admit, I feel like with the Squigoth, it's a case of, it's a case of go big or go home. I feel like the, the spectacle is kind of lost on this one because it is so much smaller. It's still cool. It's still really well done. Like, I still think the design of it is really good. But I feel like it doesn't quite have the same impact as the Gargantuan one simply because it kind of looks like it could just be a vehicle and that would be easier. I don't know. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't quite work the same way for me. It still looks good, and in fact, when you look at it, it's just, you know, everything's been scaled down slightly and, and adjusted for uh, for a, a slightly, like a slightly different size. I say slightly different, it's not slight, it's significantly different, because uh, that is an orc on a bike, and next to a normal swig off, the bike isn't particularly tiny. It still looks good, but it just doesn't have the same, just doesn't have the same oomph as, as that, you know? It's... It's okay, it's fine, but I feel like if you're going to squig off it, you need to go big or go home. That's the only two options. Next up we have the Orc Stomper, the Forge World version, 166 quid. So pricey, but it is once again a pretty damn good model to be honest. The only thing I'm not sure about, and this is this extends to like quite a lot of the Orc mech stuff anyway. Not all of it, but some of it. Um... The connection between the arms and the main body always feels a little too spindly. Like, I, it looking ramshackle and kind of bodged together, that is a perfect look for orcs, that is what you'd expect. But I always feel like there's a, there's a lack of strength there, which, it doesn't spoil it, but it just makes it look a bit, a bit too ramshackle for my liking. I, I always feel like it should be beefed up just a little bit. That's the only thing I don't really like, though. Everything else about this model is really cool. The belly gun, the fact you've got the uh, you got those like teeth over the top of it, and the spikes down the bottom, the little like grot poking out of the uh, of the chest as well. That laser cannon thing, whatever that is, 
I always forget what it is, like where the eye would be, is really nicely done. There's a lot of really cool detail for that. Like you can see there, there's like the wiring coils and stuff on it. It could have just been a cylinder with a bit of plating to make it look a bit more interesting, but no, it, it looks it looks technical and real, and I really, really like that. Plus the massive claw on the uh on the end of one of the arms is I mean it's one of the most brutal weapons on uh, on a vehicle in 40k for me genuinely it looks it just looks so awful like no part of that would be a good time the fact it's got the 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 like buzzsaw in the the thumb i guess it just just adds to what is a pretty nasty like gnarly looking weapon it is good i do like it a lot i'll be honest most of this video is going to be me saying like this stuff because i feel like the Forge World Orc stuff is just super well done generally. Although I will say right now that this, the Kill Burster slash Kill Blaster tank, hands down one of my favourite things that Forge World does. I absolutely love this thing. I kind of rediscover it occasionally. I forget that it exists. And then I just go hunting through Forge World for interesting things, which is a dangerous thing to do, but there you go. And uh, I nine times out of ten, I will suddenly come across it again and go... Oh yeah, this thing is absolutely awesome. I love it. It's it's so good. It's it's not quite as like it's not quite as like ramshackle as the stomper. It feels like there's more structure there, like more planning has gone into it. But I mean just the shape of it. The shape of it is really, really good. The amount of detail in terms of armor panels and rivets and like patched areas. You've got things like the little turret off to one side, which you don't get on the other side. The other side has just got a little, like a little opening that's got a flamer sticking through. Only one side has got that turret. That kind of asymmetrical approach is is so nice. It's so good. And the like the different variants. The fact that you've got the one with the massive cannon on the front, which I'm assuming is the blaster. And then you've got the uh, the other one where you've just got a bunch of random weapons sticking out of the front of it. That is such an... It's such a good look. It's such a good orc look. They have just taken a bunch of guns and built a tank around it. It feels like the gun came first and then the tank was just a method of transporting said gun. I, I absolutely love this thing. I really do. It... It's kind of, it's, it is clearly 40k, but it also feels kind of, kind of Mad Max in a way, which I know a lot of Orc stuff does, but there's just something about the, the shape and attitude of this thing. It's, it's not as, like, like comedic as a lot of Orc vehicles are. Like, the Orc vehicles have, have kind of got swerved hard back into being quite funny, where you've got things like the like the 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 shock like the the dragster you've got like the you've got the dragster you've got the uh the scrap jet you've you've got things that are either clear clear kind of influenced things from other franchises like which is it is it the rocker truck squig buggy that's got the the grot like tied to the front of it you've got things that are like clearly borrowed or inspired by the franchises you've got stuff that is flat out ridiculous like the like the dragster and the scrap jet this feels very different to a lot of that stuff because it feels more purposeful this feels menacing in a way that quite a lot of the new york vehicles don't and i really really like it for that it is such such a good model i would i would love to have this one day i really would i don't have an orc army so it'd be a totally pointless buy but I would be gutted if this disappeared before I was able to get hold of it. It's just so good. So good. Now, something else that is properly awesome, if at a slightly different scale, is the Grot Mega Tank. This thing, it's so goofy and brilliant at the same time. Like, it's a Grot, it's literally a tank for Grots, but it's a Mega Tank for Grots. So, compared to a Grot, it's pretty massive. The fact it looks like some sort of weird battleship on tracks is perfect. The multiple turrets are just such a cool touch. You've got your little grot commander in the top. Oh, it's such a good model. It is such a good model. 
it's so weird. Like, it's so weird and daft, but in the best possible way. And then, you, like, you put that next to the uh, the other grot tanks, and you've got this, like, like, a full little, like, a proper little squadron of mad baby tanks. It's so well done. It feels like such a cool, like, cohesive thing as well. Like, these, these, these just grot tanks fit so perfectly next to the, uh, the the Grot Mega Tank. You you just know that you put these four down surrounding that and you have got a ridiculously cool looking little unit. It's so good. They're so good. Collectively the Grot Tanks are are just absolutely perfect. Like genuinely perfect models. There's no part of these that are bad. I, oh god, I love them. Love them. Now, talking of tanks, or at least tracked vehicles, the Orc Big Track is another quality offering out of this range. It's, I mean, it's mental. Like a, like a weird turbine-powered platform of some kind. The fact that it looks like it could be used to transport boys, or alternatively could be used to transport massive guns. I don't know, it's, it's one of those vehicles that just looks at home in any sort of situation. It also looks weirdly sleek. Like, I would suggest that it almost looks fast. Quite low to the ground, in a way. Except also, I guess it's not all that low to the ground because it's on massive tracks. But, I don't know, it's it's a weirdly designed one because it, it feels quite compact, in a way. It does look awesome, though. And there are There's, like, a nice detail on here of... Uh, oh, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Like, the, the Imperial Aquila on the... On like part of the armor plating that's been used to build it, that little touch makes like it makes a lot of difference to stuff like this. It makes it feel again cobbled together, but like there was there was like a bit of a design in mind, but it was built using whatever was lying around. It's it's really really well done. I really like this thing. Now the Orc Knob War Bikes, I kind of go back and forth on. I I. There are bits of them that I do like and bits that I really don't like. Uh, like that bike, I do quite enjoy. I think that's a that's a decent bike. It looks good. It looks almost almost actually completely functional, which is rare and nice for forty k bikes. Let's be honest. But then there are some questionable choices that I just don't really like as much. Again, this one, this one looks good. This one looks fine. I like the mismatched wheels. It, like stuff like that is, it's like it's like a nice touch. It's a cool way of doing things. But then, for me, it's kind of spoiled by this one, just because the track at the front doesn't. It just doesn't look right. It, I mean, it it almost looks like it almost looks like one of them had to be made a bit. We've got to make it more wacky. The other two are too sensible. We need to really, we need to pile on for one of them to make it to make it look as orky as possible. And it doesn't necessarily look orky. It just looks like it wouldn't work in any way. Which for orcs, I suppose, isn't as big a deal as, uh, as say, you know, Primaris bikes that have got absolutely no ground clearance. But aesthetically, I just don't like it because it looks too squat. It looks too squished together because you've got the like the double width at the back you've got like you know you've got two you've got two wheels at the back which inexplicably also seem to be coming out of another wheel which is weird and then you've got that track unit at the front it makes it look squat and fat but i don't know the shape is just off it's just not got a good silhouette for me personally the actual knobs themselves look pretty decent the uh, the lad with metal plates all over his face is hardcore, and I uh, I appreciate that. But yeah, out of the three, I only really like two of the bikes, and the other one is just it's too much. It just doesn't work all that well for me personally. By contrast, the uh, the war boss on bike looks solid. It is a weird design. In fact, in a way, it's a very similar design to the bike that I was complaining about, except it's got the wheel at the front and it's got tracks at the back. The difference is that this is a longer bike, which I think is what makes it more, like, I don't know, I, I find it easier to cope with the shape of this one because it is a longer vehicle overall. It also, 
is weighted slightly differently. It looks a bit more streamlined. Plus, the Warboss has got a massive buzzsaw, like on an extension thing, out from his arm. And a massive jet engine on the back of his... Uh, well, it's probably not a jet engine. Whatever that is, on the back of the bike itself. I also feel like the structure at the back makes more sense. That, to me, makes way more sense than, like, that. Because that looks like two wheels stuck onto another wheel, which is kind of, I'm assuming, made out of a Space Marine bike, by the look of things, maybe? It's It, it looks a bit too plain, and it doesn't really look like it makes any sense. Whereas, you can clearly see, like, suspension there. You like, The width seems a bit better. It's a similar design, but I think it's I think it's just done a bit better. Yeah, I mean you can see like the just the bike itself is is bigger and so the proportions fit that much better, I think. We also have Orc Mech Boss Buzz Gob, which is an incredibly difficult thing to say at the best of times. This is a really good model. It is a really good model. I just wish there has like Ah, the it's such a like daft thing to nitpick. There's a bit too much angular going on in certain areas of this model, and I don't know how else to put it. And I know, I know that it's a daft thing to complain about, but it, I there's just something about it that does doesn't quite sit right with me. It's it's as simple as. The backpack itself that he's got on, like the power pack, is is very rectangular. It's made up of lots of different like square rectangular shapes, and then the the things coming out of it, like his power arms, the position of them is also really angular, and it makes the model look blocky to me. It's not actually a blocky model because the orc himself. Is you know he's well sculpted the like the muscles are really well defined. There's lots of like cool details of of things like the cog hanging down the front. The axe is also really cool, but for some reason, for like the back and the side, just makes him look a bit like a brick and not in a good way. And it's it feels like such a weird thing to nitpick about, but it's just yeah, it's just not it's not perfect. His little companions, spot on, love them, they're awesome. Overall, the model's decent, but I just feel like a little bit of reposing here and there with uh, with his paraphernalia would just make him look a bit less, I don't know, a bit less lifeless, in a way. Now, we had to take a look at the, uh, the Battle Wagon, the Super Cannon. It's not particularly anything new or special, because it's just a Battle Wagon, the Super Cannon, but it is one of those things that illustrates just what a like a change of armament can do for a vehicle. I do like the battle wagon a lot, but this is one of those this is one of those occasions where just taking one thing off and putting something else on can completely change the like the almost like the attitude of a model. That to me looks way more threatening than a standard battle wagon with the like the crew compartment at the back with then the turret on top of the crew compartment and then you've got another turret onto the front and all of that. Those battle wagons for me tend to look a bit overloaded and not necessarily in a good way. They can sometimes look a bit too crowded and a bit too top heavy. Like just a bit too much like actually if we did push this too hard it would fall over which is not a great look. This doesn't look like that. It looks more stable, it looks more capable it just makes an already, for the most part, decent model look even better. It is also quite a bit more expensive, being 56 quid. But that's what you get for sticking a giant cannon on top of your on top of your battle wagon. Now finally we've got the Mega Dread and the Mecha Dread. Both of these are quality. Just quality. They are so good. They're so ramshackle, like slapped together. The like even the weapons just look awful and pincery, and they they're so well done. They are so well done. These things, 
I mean, look at the state of it. It's such a nightmare creation. Like, the overcomplicated joints with all the cables and the various pistons and stuff look great. The really, like, heavy riveting and stuff all over the armor and the feet. That massive cannon just looks amazing. Oh, my God. I, I love these. The Again, these are things that I need to, at some point, grab before they go the way of the dodo. Because... I'm assuming that at some point Forge World will retire things without any warning because they've done it before. And like if these went before I managed to get hold of them, I would be absolutely gutted. They just look so good. They're so overcomplicated. They're so overcomplicated and weird. But at the same time, they look like they would work, which for an orc vehicle is kind of uh, kind of impressive. Admittedly, the Mecha Dread is slightly more bizarre, I feel, with the with like the tow hook on the front and the actual face on the front of it, complete with the telescopic eye. It's definitely the weirder of the two. But yeah, they're they're both just they're both just such they're just so good. Just so good. Even having the detail of the pilot as well. I love that the fact that there is a uh, like you can have it so that the hatch is open with the orc pilot like like sticking his head out. That is such a good touch, such a good touch. Oh, it looks so good. Ah, oh, I don't know whether this is like the favourite or whether or whether it's this. Oh, that's difficult. That's a difficult choice to make because they both look quality. Oh, I feel like it's that. I feel like it's got to be the Kill Burster slash Blaster. It's got to be. It's so good. That is the Orc options available from Forge World. Of course, technically, to do a full, proper Orc options from Forge World video, we would need to cover every vehicle on Forge World, because every model is an Orc model, if you want it to be. But those are the ones specifically labelled for the Orcs, so we'll stick with that for now. Out of those, anything grab your eye, anything you have... Are any of these models, uh, do you have the, are they in your possession and do you love them as your own children? That's getting a bit weird. Basically, what's your favourite? Anything really jump out at you? Uh, it's got to be this one for me. I mean, it's got to be the Kill Burster slash Kill Blaster. It's just, it's just immense. It's immense. It's so good. Let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click if you don't want to. Uh, I'm going to go away and lie down for a bit now. I hope you all have a lovely weekend, and I will see you again soon.